What up, Josh Rumor from East West Healing Informants. Today, I want to talk about milk. Milk does a body good, so pass it on. We have all these new emerging diseases, new emerging allergies, bacterial infections, parasites, deficiencies, like vitamin D deficiency. The past years have been so insane. Every doctor, you can go in, your eyeball's falling out, and they write you and say, I think you need to up your dose or start taking vitamin D. The problem is... We have so many people focusing on, or doctors or practitioners, focusing on the changes in the person instead of focusing on the degradation of our food supply. Why are we not focusing on our food supply? The food produces the human. Of course, the human produces the human, but the food produces the human that produces the human. So why not focus on the degradation of our food and what's going on? Now, when it comes to dairy... There's a lot of misconceptions out there. And what you hear is, well, I'm uh, lactose intolerant. Um, I actually have a uh, food intolerance or I'm allergic to milk. Well, there's a huge difference between intolerance and allergy, so we have to get it straight first off. You hear people say that, um, you know, we're not cows, so I shouldn't drink cow milk. Um, but usually those people are eating, you know, shitty, crappy, conventional, you know, processed foods so they don't really make any sense anyway so it's not even worth arguing with them you hear people say that um when they drink milk they get a, a reaction and they get mucus buildup and gas and bloating well we have to look at things we really have to look at them and what i've learned over the years because i used to be like that i was in college i was lactose intolerant it's like cool cool at the time to be lactose intolerant just like right now it's cool to be gluten intolerant you say you're gluten intolerant, it's like you got a Prada pocketbook on walking around with some Jimmy Choo shoes. But it's not cool. It is not cool. And the funny thing is about dairy, there's so, there's so many things we have to look at. The first thing we have to look at is, like my last YouTube and blog that we did, or recently, is carrageenan. A lot of dairy products have carrageenan in them. So if you get inflammation, it could be the carrageenan in your soy milk, in your coconut milk. In your almond milk, almonds don't even have teats. I don't even know how they're getting milk out of almonds. So research that one. Um, there's a lot of carrageenan, which produces systemic inflammation, creates an immune system response. So if you're drinking other foods or eating foods on top of that, you will end, the, uh, you will end up with a food intolerance from the foods you're eating. So it's really not what you're eating that's causing the problem. It's the degradation of that food. Of course, if you're eating soy and almond milk, I mean, I can't even go into that. But let's just go to milk with carrageenan. It's really not the milk that's the problem. It's the carrageenan that's the problem. So that's the first thing you want to think about. Second thing you want to think about is, what were those animals fed? No one really says, well, what were those animals fed? Milk sucks. I can't have milk because it creates inflammation. Well, whatever that animal ate, cow, goat, sheep, whatever it was, you're essentially eating. So they feed these cows lots of grains and unsaturated fatty acids. The problem is with these unsaturated fatty acids, you know, plants produce them to actually protect themselves from the cold and many other things. The problem with the PUFAs or the unsaturated fats that um, cows might be eating in excess, it creates inflammation in their body. Now, cows are ruminant animals, and they can actually turn some of these unsaturated fats into saturated fats. That's why beefs are actually healthier than chickens. But the problem is, if they keep taking in all these unsaturated fatty acids, or even, you know, the prolamines, the group of, group of uh, proteins they're taking in, gluten, it'll actually leach out from their stomach into the blood and through the liver and overload the liver. So now, a lot of these... Um, you know, gl gliadin and proteins or prolamines and PUFAs are making their way into the milk. So what if you're actually intolerant to the milk or you have an immune system reaction or mucus buildup or bloating or gas, not because of the milk, but because of what the cow ate and what's in the milk? So that's another thing you need to start thinking about. Another thing you need to start thinking about is what Ray P. calls, um, you can read his article on milk, uh, I think it's like first on his website right now. Uh, a ch I can't even pronounce it, but it's a, 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 ch a chitinase, a C-H-I-T-I-N-A-S-E. And plants actually produce this in response to injury, like inflammation. And it's actually produced in human bacteria. This is actually part of our innate immune system in response to stress or light damage or polyps, cancers. And it's actually induced by estrogens. 
It's actually the one protein that's responsible for uh, latex allergies or allergies to bananas or um, um, to avocados or reactions to these foods or to latex. So that's something, something else you have to think about in regards to what's in the milk because if you're eating a milk that has a lot of these proteins in it, that can create increased estrogen production in the body, which can create the inflammatory response, which can cause your food intolerance. Now, the other thing you have to think about is vitamin A and D. Of course, we need vitamin A and D. Super important for the thyroid, for the liver, you name it. The problem is this. Most milk out there that's pasteurized, let's not even go organic. Just talk about vitamin A and D, pasteurized. It's actually getting its source of supplements from overseas. Most of the supplements and the stuff they make supplements with comes from overseas. And an interesting fact less than 12%, less than 12% of these companies are actually inspected by the FDA on a yearly basis. And these are coming from countries that actually have less strict of a system when it comes to different fillers, pesticides than we do. So you're paying a lot for the supplement that's coming from a foreign country that has crappy vitamin A and D in it. So what if it's the vitamin A and D that's synthetic and junky that's causing the inflammation and it's really not the milk, the milk itself. Another thing you have to think of is lactose intolerance. Well, I've talked about this before. You have villi and microvilli in your small intestine. Microvilli actually release lactase to break down lactose. They break down sucrase to break down sucrose. And they release lacteals to break down fat. Now, if you're hypothyroid and you develop a bacterial overgrowth, if you're eating lots of processed foods, lots of pa um, um, gluten, um, if you're chronically stressed, you have, I mean, you name it, your villi and microvilli will actually start to degrade because of inflammation. Now, what's going to happen is now you can't absorb your food. You can easily end up with immune system problems and food intolerances. At the same time, now you don't have those microvilli that release lactase to bring down lactose. So you actually end up with a lactose intolerance, but you're really not lactose intolerant. It's not the milk. It's actually your small intestine that's not allowing you to actually break down the milk and absorb it. So healing that system allows you to absorb the milk. That's another thing to look at. Another interesting thing Ray P talks about is progesterone deficiency can actually create lactase, def lactase deficiency secondary to excess cortisol and estrogen production. So that can cause a problem with digestion of milk. Another thing that's important when it comes to actually dairy of any source is parathyroid hormone. Now when calcium levels are low in the body, and this can be due for many reasons, but we're talking about milk. Um, when calcium levels are low in the body, the parathyroid will actually release parathyroid hormone, PTH, in order to break down bone to increase blood levels of calcium. And only when calcium is normal, it will stop. The problem is parathyroid hormone is actually highly inflammatory, and it's actually been shown to cause hardening of the arteries. So we have to ask ourselves, is it actually from milk, or is it from lack of milk, or the wrong types of milk, that are causing excess parathyroid hormone that's causing the hardening of the arteries? It's actually been shown to create diabetes in excess, obesity, hypertension, um, and it's all related to the parathyroid hormone. Because parathyroid hormone, just like estrogen, causes mast cells, part of the immune system, to release histamine and serotonin, which are highly inflammatory. And those will cause the mucus problems, the respiratory problems, the skin problems, the puffiness, the digestive problems, the constipation, and things like that. So it might not be the milk. It might be the actual deficiency in the right types of milk that's causing the problem. Or maybe you're taking in a milk that has a lot of synthetic vitamin D or synthetic calcium in it that's actually causing the problems. Or you're not eating the right foods that have enough calcium. The interesting thing about Ray in calcium you know, he recommends it, but he recommends actually taking the shells of an egg, you know, heating, heating them up a little bit and then crushing them up and mixing the, the crushed shells in with your coffee grinds to get, get your calcium that way, as, as well, especially with other foods. But that's just really quick. All right. The reason we like milk, number one, it's low in iron. Iron is toxic and highly inflammatory, so it's very low in iron. The other thing about dairy that we really like is of course it has vitamin A in it and vitamin D and magnesium which help regulate blood sugar. It's got calcium in it which will downregulate parathyroid hormone which is you know, highly inflammatory. It can create osteoporosis and many other diseases. But milk and dairy and things like that, it's almost like a meal. 
So you're getting the fat and you're getting the amino acids, which will help regulate blood sugar. But having your dairy of some sort, along with a fruit or sugar, will actually downregulate adrenaline and cortisol and estrogen and histamine and serotonin and parathyroid hormone, which will lead to better, bigger, stronger bones, decreased inflammation, balancing the hormonal system, increased muscle growth, increased vitality, increased energy. It's going to boost your thyroid from being hypothyroid to normal. It's going to increase your body temperature, help detox the liver, and basically take you from an inflammatory state to an anti-inflammatory state. So thanks for tuning in. I'm out of here.